You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they are created and have their being. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Amen. Amen. Praise, praise and glory and wisdom, and wisdom thanksgiving and, and honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Hear these words of Scripture. Love one another, for love is of God, and whoever loves is born of God and knows God. Spirit, Spirit of God, God search, search our hearts. Let us in silence remember our need for God's forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God. God of mercy, we have sinned against you and against others. We have sinned in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. Forgive us all that is past and raise us to newness of life. Amen. Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us rejoice in the rock of our salvation. We sing to you, O God, and bless your name and tell of your salvation from day to day. We proclaim your glory to the nations, your praise to the ends of the earth. The Lord is King. 
Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name, they called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your words of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Archaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Archaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that that is coming. Here's what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The response to the first reading is the song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old that you would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. You promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness 
and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks, be, Thanks be to God. The response to the second reading is Te Deum Laudamus. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became incarnate to set us free, you humbly accepted the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Let us now join our voices together and proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Make your ways known upon earth, O God, your saving power among all peoples. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy, O God, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace, and let your glory be over all the earth. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy and ever-living God, by your power we are created, and by your love we are redeemed. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live each day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So have you ever heard the one about the scientist who set out to prove that there's nothing God can do that humans can't? And one day, to his shock and amazement, God actually spoke to him and took him up on his challenge. Okay, God said, how about this? Can you make a human being out of the dust of the earth? Of course, the scientist replied with a smirk on his face. That's an easy one. So the scientist and God agreed upon a time and a place for their contest. The big day arrived, and both contestants took their place. When the whistle was blown for the contest to begin, the scientist immediately took up a big spook, scoop full of soil in his hand. But God turned to him indignant and said, Oh, no, 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 wait just one second. That's against the rules. You go get your own dirt. Well, I suppose there are some times and places where we tend to underestimate ourselves. I believe that we way too often grossly underestimate God. Whose head is this? And whose title? Jesus asked. The emperor's, they reply. Give therefore the, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Okay. Well and good. I guess that means that the coin used to pay the tax goes to the emperor. Hmm. And the produce the laborer spent all day picking goes to the company that owns the land. And the rent goes to the landlord. And the patent for that new piece of software you developed goes to the company CEO. And to God? Hmm. Well, we'll get back to that. I think that pretty much covers it, right? Or does it? There are several clarifying questions Jesus could have asked in today's parable, but didn't. What's the coin made of? Bronze. Where does bronze come from? 
the earth and human labor? And who made the earth? Er, okay, shelve that question for a moment. How about the human labor? Well, they're all slaves, so they belong to the masters. And to whom does the master belong? Well, to the emperor, I suppose. And to whom does the emperor belong? Give, therefore, to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. See, Jesus' answer to the Pharisees was an excellent way to avoid the trap they had set for him. But the real punchline to this story is not what he said, but what he didn't say. Sure, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, but nothing is the emperor's. In the divine economy, the only true economy, the emperor is in the same financial position as all the rest of us. He's penniless, completely broke. Yes, for all the pomp, for all the grandeur, the emperor exists in abject poverty. If God is who we say God is, then absolutely nothing in all creation, not even a fraction of an atom, can be said to belong to anyone but God. In fact, the emperor's poverty may be even more profound than that of a slave, because at least the slave is aware that she does not legitimately own anything. The emperor lives in delusion. And if we're honest, so do we all, to some extent. In our heart's imaginings, we so often see the achievements and possessions of ourselves and of our communities as our personal property, something that we've earned and are entitled to keep sequestered away for our exclusive use and enjoyment. Now, please don't think I'm saying that others are somehow always entitled to that for which we have labored. I'm not. I am, however, noting that anything and everything we have can ultimately be traced back to a gift, not of our own designs, but of God. Now, this is a very humbling realization but it's also a liberating one. It's especially liberating in the season that we're facing right now. Less than three weeks from now, one of the most bizarre and contentious elections in our nation's history will reach its culmination. In these weeks leading up to that moment, it's way too easy to get caught up in all of the bluster and drama. Each side seems to be telling us that the fate of the universe depends upon their candidates and their agendas winning the day while the other side is completely obliterated. Both are mistaken. Both are operating under the emperor's delusion. If we can take a step back and give the situation a sober look for just a moment, we can see clearly that this and all elections are ultimately about the distribution of money, goods, and property. 
Each side speaks about that distribution in language that implies that individuals and groups actually have complete ownership over those things. Theologically speaking, they are mistaken. So what does that mean for us? It means that while this election is undeniably important, it is by no means reason for us to be overcome with anxiety. The fate of the universe rests on something bigger and far more stable than its outcome. The politicians may be deluded into thinking that they or the people they're beholden to have legitimate and exclusive ownership of things, but we don't have to fall for that delusion. We need not be so anxious. But we can also use the wisdom of today's parable to help distill what choices we will make as we vote. Absolutely no candidate is perfect, and no legislation provides perfect solutions for our human dilemmas. There is, however, a guiding principle I believe that we can use as we discern what to do with our ballots. Who are the people on that ballot who best understand that we are stewards of everything but owners of nothing? Who are the ones who recognize that ultimately all things belong to and must be given back to God, their source? What policies and propositions best reflect this great spiritual truth? And this is where I must leave you. I have my own answers to these questions and discerning yours is up to you. In terms of which boxes to tick on the ballot, the right way to vote as a Christian is something that has to be up to the individual believer's conscience. In today's parable, however, we are encouraged to do this without anxiety and to remember this one key truth. Nothing belongs to the emperor. Everything belongs to God. Let your vote and let your life be a testimony to that. Let us pray in joy and hope to our God, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you have made your church an instrument to reconcile all people to you and to one another. Shower your grace upon all people and assemblies of faith that our life together might reflect your divine life ever more perfectly. Today, we pray especially for the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Episcopal Church in the United States. Pour out your blessings also upon the Episcopal Church in this land and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, and St. Luke's Church in San Francisco. Let your blessing also come to our fellow faith assemblies in this community, especially Valley Bible Church in Livermore. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, in whom mercy and justice embrace, we lift up to you our nation. Let your wisdom and peace 
guide and govern our decisions, large and small. In this contentious time, leading up to an election in our land, we pray that you would dwell in the hearts and minds of all, especially those in power and whose decisions affect the lives of many. Thank you for guiding us, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God of perfect health and wholeness, in this time of pandemic and fear and uncertainty that surround it, we lift up to you all those who care for the sick and the suffering. Pour out a special blessing upon all who follow your call to care for others in body, mind, or spirit, especially all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, Brad O, Brad S, and all those helping those with COVID. Give them the gifts of courage and joy in their work and protect them from all adversity and harm. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of heavenly peace, we pray for all the nations and peoples of the world. Thank you for helping all of us to open our hearts with courage, gratitude, forgiveness, and compassion in action so that we may help end the warring madness and co-create a just peace for all in your creation. Lord, hear our prayer. O Creator God, we see your creation groaning in this time marked with wildfires, other natural disasters, and the fires of human unrest. Send us relief and protect and comfort, especially those who are most fragile and vulnerable. Thank you for giving us also the wisdom and will to protect and care for your creation as you would have us do. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, who is, who, God who is love, this congregation lives as a people blessed by your grace and ever seeking to know and experience you more fully. Bless all its members with the gifts of hope, wisdom, and compassion. Pour out a special blessing on these members in our weekly cycle of prayer. For Jeff, Liz, Grace, and March. For Rudy, Betty, Elizabeth, Helen, and John. And for Bing and Rosemary as well as those in military service. For Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who have requested our prayers for healing and wholeness. We pray for Olivia, Anna, Beth, Bob, Kathy, Kathy, Chris, Jessica, and Nesta, Dave, Dottie, Elda, Aaron, Esteban, Fabian A., Glennis, Geraldine, Umberto, Candida, and family, Jackie, Janice, Leah, Mark, Luke, Mark G, Marissa, Monty and Judy, Nan D, Michael, Sandra and Henrietta, Michael E, Randy and Maddie, Sharon, Steve W and children, Yunus, the Moeller family, the Tucker family, the Sherman family, Father Ron Culmer and family, the Cairo family, the Lodel family, 
and the Drake Owen family. With special prayers today for Dottie and Bernie as they have put their son to rest. And we wish for healing prayers for all creatures experiencing the challenges of wildfires in the West, hurricanes and tropical storms on all the coasts, and especially those suffering from COVID. Give to your people the gifts of comfort and healing, as well as a lively and abiding faith in your goodness throughout all circumstances. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of the living and the dead, in the passion and resurrection of Christ, you made death the gateway to new and eternal life. Pour that life upon all your servants to potter this life, especially Gary H., Carl M., Paula T., Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Lisa M., Walt D., Wilma M., Matthew S., Robert T., Sonia C., Haney N., Richard F., Joseph C., Mihao L., and Alice D. And raise them to everlasting glory in your presence. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, O Lord of wonder, in great hope, we pray to you with hearts and voices for our other needs and concerns, and we offer you thanks for all the blessings of this life. of healing and gratitude for Mary Lou and her family. For all the wounds she suffered and hunger. Scarlett Lewis and the Jesse Lewis Cheese Love Foundation for helping our students to make back cheese love. O Lord of all creation, thank you for the witness of the gospel. Thank you for today's reminder that nothing belongs to the emperor and that all things belong to you. Teach us over and over that while you have given all things over to us, it is only for the purpose of caring for them and never to exploit or consume them. Give us the ability to be the stewards of creation you would have us be. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Before we conclude, please bear with three short announcements. The first is I'm well aware that during this time of primarily virtual worship, uh, you may be somebody who is not ordinarily a part of the St. Bartholomew's community tuning in online. If that's the case, my name is Andy. I am the, uh, the rector, the priest and pastor here. I would be delighted to hear from you um, on the same website where you tuned into this service, there is email and telephone contact information, and I would thoroughly encourage you to reach out and use those. I would love to get to know you. The second announcement is that during the first week of November, in honor of All Saints and All Souls Days, uh, communion will again be distributed to all households of St. Bartholomew's. So I look forward to seeing all of you again in that context, and just please expect that as we move into the early days of November. Uh, the final announcement is, uh, of course, there was a little bit of a, an election theme to the second half of my sermon. Um, I just really want to encourage, especially in this year where it may be particularly frustrating to vote, uh, I know that every registered voter in the state of California has now received a mail-in ballot. Uh, please do exercise your civic right and responsibility if you are at all willing and able. Uh, this is one of the ways that people of Christian values uh, can exert their influence in public life, and it may seem like a small thing. It's obviously a very imperfect vessel, but I really encourage you to fill out your whole ballot and put that in the mail before the 3rd of November. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Hallelujah!